In this video, we're going to cover a bunch of properties of vectors. So in order to define a vector, we can take two points A and B, and we can define them as A is x1, y1, z1, B is x2, y2, z2, and we can create a vector from that. So how we can do that is we take each of the components, so the first component of A and the first component of B, we take the endpoint and we subtract from the initial point. So this would be x2 minus x1 is going to give us our first point. Then we're going to take the second point, endpoint minus the initial point, so y2 minus y1. And the same thing for the third one, which would be z2 minus z1. So graphically, let's say we have a graph like this. Uh, we give this point b. Uh, let's say this is a two-dimensional vector. So let's call this uh, 6, 10. And let's say that we have a point A here, which we'll call 1, 1. In order to figure out the vector for AB, which we're going to call this V, what we can do is we can just take the end point. So the vector that we're drawing is going to be this one right here these two points my tool snaps so let's just use this uh, it's going to be 6 minus 1 and 10 minus 1 which is going to give us the vector 5 9. in three dimensions it would be the same thing but a two-dimensional graph here is good enough to visualize the process now every vector is going to have a length so in terms of, let's say we have a vector that looks like this. So if this is our vector, we define things in terms of the x and y coordinates. So this would be x and this would be y. Now, if we know anything about right angle triangles, uh, we know how to use Pythagoras' theorem. So this is just the same for two dimensional vectors. We're, we're going to end up taking the square root of x squared plus y squared, since x squared plus y squared is equal to c squared. So this would end up being, yeah, the square root of x squared plus y squared according to Pythagoras' theorem. Now, if we have a three-dimensional vector, it's the same process. We're just adding another dimension. So what we're going to get is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And the graph would look pretty similar. So let's say you have a vector with like eight components. Then you'd have x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus v squared plus w squared all the way up until you hit your eight components. So let's imagine for a second that w was the vector 3, 4, 5. Then in order to calculate the length of this vector, so the length of w, it's just going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared, which is going to be the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 25. And this will give us 25 plus 25, which is the square root of 50. That would be its length. Now, when you have vectors, there's a lot of things that you can do with them, and a lot of this looks just like regular addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so on. So in this one, I have A and B are vectors, and then I have C and D are going to be real numbers. They're scalars. So here's the eight vector properties that you should know. We'll show how to prove one, and then I'll leave the rest as an exercise since they're all pretty straightforward once you know how to do one. So if we have two vectors that we're adding A and B, we can flip the order around. This is called commutativity. If we have the vector a plus the vector 0, so this is just 0, 0, however many components you have, it's all 0. This just gives us a back. It's like adding 1 plus 0. You get 1 back. If you have vectors a, b, and c, and you add b and c first and then a later, that's equivalent to adding vector a and b first and then C after that. So you can switch the brackets around when the sign is the same with the addition. And this is called associativity. If you take a vector A, 
and you add its inverse, negative a, you get the zero vector back. This is kind of like saying, I'm starting at this point, I'm going to here, now I'm starting at this point, and I'm going back to the original point. So we basically just get a vector that doesn't go anywhere. If we have a number multiplying two vectors by, so c is a number, and then we have vector a plus b, this is the same as taking c times the vector a and adding c times the vector b, so multiplication works just like it does over addition in our real numbers. Same in 6, here we have two scalar numbers being added together, multiplied by a vector. This is just like saying ca plus da, same property holds. If we're multiplying two scalars by a vector, we can multiply c and d first and then do the vector a, or we can do d and a first and then multiply by the scalar c, so the brackets can shift. And finally, if we have 1 times the vector a, that's just going to give us the vector a back. So how do we prove this? Well, let's show the first property. So let's show that the vector a plus the vector b is going to equal the vector b plus the vector a. So how we can do this is first we should probably define our vectors. So let's say that a is x1, y1, and b is going to be x2, y2. So if we take a plus b, we're adding x1, y1 with x2, y2. Now, if we put these vectors together, what we're going to get is x1 plus x2, and then y1 plus y2. But now we're dealing with real numbers, and we know that with real numbers, we can swap the order. So this is going to be the same as x2 plus x1, component 1, and then y2 plus y1. And based on a rule of addition, we can now separate these components. So this would be the same as saying x2, y2, plus x1, y1, which is going to give us the vector b plus the vector a. So this might seem trivial, but remember, vectors are different than real numbers. So if we want to show that something for a vector holds, we have to show how it works with real numbers. So all of the other proofs are very similar to this. It's just breaking it down into its components, merging them together, doing some addition or multiplication, breaking those components up, and then showing that you have an equivalence. So now that we know a little bit about vectors and their properties, we should introduce what are called the standard basis vectors, and we call these i, j, and k. And you can think of these as vectors that lie just on one axis and move it forward one bit. So in other words, i has one component that is non-zero. So for this one, i would be 1, 0, 0. So in other words, this is one unit in the x-axis. We have our component j, so this is going to be one unit in the y-axis, so 0, 1, 0. J would be right here. And then, of course, we're going to have K. We can do this in white. So K is going to be 0, 0, 1. And this is going in the Z axis. So that would be K. So now, instead of writing a vector like uh, 5, 2, 3, and calling this V, what we can do is say that v is going to be the vector 5i plus 2j plus 3k. So we're turning our vector into something that's more like an equation. And if you were to add these together, you'd get the same thing. Because essentially what you'd be getting is, and I'm going to use a slightly different notation for this, we can write these as columns instead of rows. You'd be getting 500 zero, zero, plus 0, 020 zero, plus 0, zero, 003. And in the end, when we add these together, we'd be getting 523, which is the same thing as this here. It's just two different notations to show the same thing. People have their preferences for what they like. I personally like the columns a little bit more, but standard calculus books use the angled notation, so I'll stick with that. 
So let's do some practice exercises to cap off this video. If a is the vector 5i plus 3j and b is the vector negative i minus 2j, we're going to find a plus b, 4a plus 2b, the length of a, and the length of a minus b. So for a plus b, we're just adding our two components together. And because we have an equation here, we don't really need to write out the vector notation. Uh, so 5i plus 3j, then we're adding negative i, so we're subtracting i, and we're subtracting 2j. So if we can take our i's together, we're going to get 4i here, and then 3j minus 2j is going to be minus j. So what the vector would look like in this case is 4, 1. And you could check this visually as well. For 4a plus 2b, we're just doing some simple multiplication here. So 4 times 5i plus 3j, and we're going to add 2 times negative i minus 2j. What is this going to give us? It's going to give us 20i plus 12j uh, minus 2i minus 4j, which is going to be 20i minus 2i is 18i and 12j minus 4j is going to give us 8j. So this would look like the vector 18, negative 8. Just realizing the first answer should be 4 and negative 1 because we're subtracting j. Now for the length of a, what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of each component squared. So this is going to be 5 squared plus 3 squared. This is going to give us 25 plus 9 which will be the square root of 34. Now, for the length of a minus b, what we're going to do is we're going to take our two vectors, so 5i plus 3j, and we're going to subtract negative i minus 2j, and what we're going to get is the vector, so we're taking 5i and we're adding an i, so that's going to be 6i, we're taking 3j and we're adding 2j, so 5j, which means if I just put the length here, this will be the square root of 6 squared plus 5 squared, which will give us 36 plus 25, which will be the square root of 61. So this is how we can solve all of our problems with vectors. Hopefully now you're comfortable with them and now we can start to play around with them with limits, derivatives, and things like that. So if you have any questions, you know what to do.